How do you write a statement and a bio? Do you actually need a statement and a bio? And what's the difference between a statement and a bio? Bios and statements can be really annoying for those who don't like writing. Sometimes I found this. I'm an artist. I like to paint things because I have trouble expressing myself (laughs) in a verbal way or through text. I have dyslexia. But there is great advantages to having a statement and a bio. And um, you don't necessarily always need them. So this is what I want to talk about in this episode. I want to talk about what they are, how you write them, whether you need them, and the difference between them. So before I get stuck in, let's talk about the difference between a statement and a bio, because this is the one where I think people get a bit tripped up. So a bio is, of course, short for biography. It is about you. Your bio is about you, not necessarily your artwork per se, but of course it is about your artwork because you make art. But it is about you, it's your journey, it's how you got into art, it's personal. Whereas your artist statement is about your art, it's not about you. And that's where the two can get muddled up sometimes. So your bio is about you, your artist statement is about your work. It's about the process, it's about why the work exists, it's an extension of the artwork to help us understand it and connect with it. The bio is to help us to connect to you as a person. So there are the differences between the two. Um, Now, whether you need them really depends. I've seen artists survive without a bio or a statement, but the truth is statements and bios have been around for a very, very, very long time. You know, Many, many artists use them for a reason, and that's because they help connect. Your work, unfortunately, won't always speak for itself. And especially in today's very, very busy world with lots of noise, a statement and a bio can really help you connect with your people. It can help you really connect emotionally, but also create more desire for what you do build rapport, build trust, help people get an insight into your work, your process. And that's amazing because when you start to gain that connection, that's where people really start to not only maybe buy from you, but also really start to understand where you're coming from as an artist. And they go, oh my gosh, yeah, I feel like that. So that's where a powerful bio and statement can come from. I have seen artwork before where I've looked and thought, yeah, it's okay. And then as soon as I've read a statement about it and I've learned about why that artwork exists, the process that went behind it and and what it actually means. I remember an artwork specifically, actually, where I read about it and I was like, oh, my gosh, I I want to buy this artwork. (laughs) It changed my view from just looking aesthetically to I felt this really big connection. So that's where bios and statements can come in very, very handy to supplement your artwork. So first of all, let's talk about a bio. So a bio is a biography all about you. There's no one way of writing a bio, but here's a few different ways. Usually, and this is what I do, I have a short, medium and long bio. You don't necessarily need this. I'm just at a stage now where I do need it. I would start with a short bio, start with the easiest. Well, I say the easiest, actually. (laughs) Writing fewer words is often harder because it's easy to write lots and lots and pages of words, but writing a small paragraph or two and really getting across what it is that you do and really concisely is difficult. It is difficult. So a bio, a short bio usually would be in the third person. And the reason for this is your short bio is usually lifted and will be used on a gallery wall in a magazine. If you're going to feature on our podcast, we would ask you for your short bio. So then when we're advertising it and we say, hey, we've got Michelle, founder of United Arts Base. This is what Michelle does. (laughs) And we'd insert the bio. So it saves other people writing a bio about you. You send them the bio. 
And that's why you'd have one in the third person. You can have one in the first person, but I would recommend having one in the third because eventually when you're getting yourself out there, you will be asked for a bio. So that's what that is. A short bio is just a paragraph, really introducing yourself, what you do, who you are, and what you stand for, what your mission is. So thinking about it, if you were featured somewhere and it said, Michelle Lloyd is joining us today, what would you want them to know about you? It's got to be interesting um, to make people go, oh, pay attention. So that's what the short bio is for. Then the medium bio just extends a little bit more from that. It just goes maybe into more about your work, the way you work, the process, maybe a little bit about your journey as an artist, where it began, where you got to where you are now. Um, that's just possibly, I, I would say, a medium length bio is nice to go on your about page on a website. So you don't necessarily need to write this until you actually need it. So I wouldn't, I would start with a small one just to get used to expressing who you are, what you do, because it can be really useful to do that short bio just so when people ask you what you do, you can verbalize it. So I would recommend doing that one, the medium one if you need one, the long bio then is a whole, you know, it's a few pages. This is your journey from beginning to where you are today. It would be maybe as a child you made art and then it led to this and then it led to that. And then I went to this workshop and it really goes into more detail. And that's for sometimes you can use that on your website if you've got like a read more button and it opens up for those that want to delve into more about you and who you are so it can be really useful on a website when people are really interested in you and they want to learn more about you that's where a long bio can be really helpful it might also feature in a magazine all sorts of places if you're represented by a gallery they definitely will want a bio from you 100 percent, they'll want a bio and it's up to the gallery whether they want the short, the medium or the long. That's something that you would discuss with them at the time. But that's in a nutshell what the bio is. And you can include things in your bio like where you were born, what you studied, if you studied. And it's OK to declare that you are a proud self-taught artist. Big accomplishments, what inspires you, other passions that you might have, your vision, your beliefs, uh, collections that you maybe have created in the past um, and where your journey began. And you can actually write your bio in chronological order, um, your long bio if you want to, or it can be more of a story-based bio. You can list things out. So that's what the bio is all about. You personally, your journey, what you are, who you are, what you are as a person. And then one thing I will say before I move on to statements is always thinking about the way you start a bio or a statement. You want to use an opening line that is interesting. Quite often people will write a bio and say, I, I, I'm Michelle Lloyd. I live in Shropshire. I'm an artist. I've always been interested in art. That kind of opening, although it's the truth, it's a little boring. And the reason it's boring is because most people start that way with their bio because it's kind of the most obvious and it's the easiest. So we tend to start with that. But this then, when people read repetitive things over and over and over again, it starts to bore people. So opening a bio with something a little bit more interesting. If it's your short bio, then usually you would you would possibly say, you know, the, Michelle, I'm Michelle Lloyd of Family United Arts Base. I, um, but usually you, you want to think about the opening line and make sure it's interesting. And usually what I find is when people write a statement or a bio, they put the interesting stuff last and the most obvious stuff at the very beginning. So when I'm usually reviewing statements and bios, all I'm, I do usually is just I switch things around and I bring the most important bit up to the top. I'm like, this is the interesting bit about you as an artist. Bring this up to the opening line because you can open with Michelle Lloyd really loves it. Michelle Lloyd is 
really interested in the boundaries between representational and abstract. Through her art, she explores. So, and then I could say, and then I'm from Shropshire, towards the end, it's not the most important bit. You want the most important bit to be at the top. And the fact that I'm interested in art from Shropshire, most people could say that about themselves. So you want to put the the juicy bit at the top that makes people go, ooh. So that's one big tip I have, um, hooking people in, using, you know, just be really mindful of that opening line. Don't overthink it, but yeah, just make sure that that's a bit juicy at the beginning. Then a statement, an artist's statement is about your artwork. Now, this can be in any format. It can be first person, third per person, poetry. It's really an extension of your art. And usually an artist statement is written about a collection or a body of artwork. It supplements the artwork to really help us connect and understand why you made it, why it exists helps us relate to your artwork. So think of it as an extension of the art. So it could be a poem if poetry inspired the artwork and you may be wanting to supplement the art in that way to show. It could be a written statement which talks about why you made the artwork, what inspired the artwork, what process you took, why the work exists, how long it took to make what your mission was with this artwork. It could also talk about where the artwork has been. So it's all about the, the art. And again, you want to hook people in at the beginning, especially with your artist statement. You really want to open up with a really interesting line about your work, not stating the obvious. Like I've always been into art since I was a child. That bit, everyone could say that as an artist. Um, so try and, I'm not saying you can't say those things, you can bring those that bit of information in a bit later once you've hooked people in. But if you start with that information, people go, yeah, I know most people are into art like in that way. So using that hook at the beginning, one thing I would say with your statement and your bio, in fact, is to aim to use visual language. And by this, I mean storytelling and using language where people can really paint a picture in their mind as they're reading. So if you are describing your childhood and I used to sit on a Sunday painting at the table, it was, a, you know, just you can describe it was a wooden table and I used to see the sun shining in through the window and my mum would have some television on in the background and I would be painting um, a landscape scene and and when you start to use that visual language as you're writing and you don't have to go over the top with this and, and create like a storybook, but it's just thinking about the language and the descriptive words you use. And can that paint a picture in someone's mind? Because it makes reading much more interesting, much more fun, but also it stays with people if you read something and you can actually paint the picture in your mind as you're reading it and you connect to words in a more emotional way, it stays with people. So really thinking about that as you're writing and you can just write and then go back in and, and think, could I add something here to, to make this a story, to bring it to life? I've often been taught this when I've been taught how to speak and we know that stories are the best way to connect with people verbally and written. So if you can include some stories in there, that really does help when people process what you're what you're saying. So when you're sitting down to write about yourself or your work, you'll always do a first draft. You're not going to sit there and write a statement and then that's it. <laughs> I wish some people may, but I would say 90% of people will not. It's a first draft and then it, it should be a first draft. It should be getting things out. You might want to, before you start, put it on post-it notes. You know, I love a post-it note session. Do a mind map of what it is about you and what it is about your artwork and start to put some keywords, uh, things that you want to include in your statements and then just start to write and see what comes out. You might want to handwrite, write digitally. 
You might want to voice record and speak about your artwork. I always love this process because sometimes if I'm staring at a blank page, I really panic. So if I get a voice recorder and I just literally sit there with no expectation and talk about like my journey or I just talk about my process and my art and stuff comes out and then you can play that back. You can even get transcription services now where you upload that and it will turn it into text for you. So there's some tips on how to get going with writing. Um, and then once you've made that first draft, it really is about edit, 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 edit. Because you want to look at every single word, every single sentence and ask yourself, does that word need to be there? Does that word serve a purpose? People use too many adjectives, too many describing words. You know, you really want to have a look at that piece of writing and start to cross out words that don't need to be there. You want to look at your sentences and really ask yourself, can I shorten this sentence? Is there a way of saying this in a shorter way? Because with writing, you want to be concise and especially bios and statements. People don't have a very big attention span, especially in today's world. People are looking for fast, quick content and you want to make sure that you get straight to the point. So cutting all the waffle out and the unnecessary words and sentences and simplify and sharpen what you're saying. That comes from five, six drafts sometimes. So then don't aim for perfection. So I'm saying all of this and then it can be really easy to kind of get in your own way and overthink it and want to perfect it and maybe think, oh, there's too many words there. I'm going to hide it away until I've got this ready. Done is better than perfect. Get something out into the world. Your bio and statements will continuously evolve. They are not static. So your bio will change as you change because you're not a static person. Your experience and what you're making will evolve and change. So your bio will change, but also it will not only change as you do new things, but you'll learn more about writing. You'll learn more about who you're writing for as well. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. So don't aim for perfection. Get it out there and just come back to it and tweak it. Your artist statement will change every time you create new work. So every time you create a new body of work, you'll create a new artist statement to supplement that artwork. One other thing to really consider, and this can be difficult if you don't know who your people are yet, but really understanding who you're speaking to is helpful when writing a bio or a statement. Because if your art statement is going into a magazine, you really want to understand who that audience is, who's reading that statement. So sometimes you might have an artist statement written and you might adapt it slightly for different audiences. So if it's going into a gallery, you might tweak some of it. You, if it's going somewhere where, I don't know, you're having an open studio at home, you might change it to adapt to the people that are actually reading it. It's really important as you grow as an artist to really start to think about who are you speaking to? Are you speaking to your people in that writing? Because if you just write for the sake of writing, which is okay at the beginning, but as you learn, you really want to speak to people. When you speak to them, they take notice. So the more you learn about your artwork and the purpose and the desire you can actually cleverly write your bios and statements to bring more desire towards your artwork, to show people what the purpose of the artwork is. So you leave people reading and thinking, I want to find out more about this. I want to, I want to buy this artwork. So you can cleverly start to weave in to your writing kind of um, content that makes people go, ooh, but this comes later. Don't force yourself to write in that way at the beginning. When I look back now, my statements of ideas, you know, I just got them going at the beginning. And over the years, I've tweaked and tweaked and tweaked and tweaked and tweaked. And I'm on version 200, I probably think now. So just evolve into this. But I, I say it because it's something to really think about, thinking about who you are talking to and the way that you can bring more desire and passion through your writing. It will really, really help. So 
I think that's it. I think that I have covered everything in terms of writing. So if you're a Hub member, you, there is a lesson on writing statements and bios. So go into the Hub, do a search for statement, because there is a whole lesson in there breaking down how to write a statement, how to write a bio. We give you examples. We give you ideal word counts. It is a fantastic lesson giving you lots and lots of examples. So go and check that lesson out. If you're not a Hub member, I have exciting news. We are opening enrollment towards the end of the year. So there will be a button somewhere around here to join the waitlist. So go and join the waitlist. It's an amazing, amazing platform where we have broken down the stages from beginner to professional and giving people resources at the stage that they're at to help them work through the roadmap of being an artist. And we have resources on every single topic, um, like applying for grant statements, pricing, approaching galleries. You get email templates, all sorts. It's incredible. So you can join the waitlist. And um, that's it for today. So happy writing. And just remember, done is better than perfect. Just get going and enjoy it most of all. Also, it's good to get other people to read um, your statements and bios as well to give their feedback but just be careful who you ask <laughs> because sometimes people can be a bit mean so yeah anyway that's it I hope you enjoyed this session I look forward to seeing your statements and bios around on social media take care bye bye